Hey everybody, welcome back to Sound the Alarm, End Time Ministries. I'm Christopher Gallagher, and today's date is August 30th, 2020. This is actually going to be my third attempt at trying to get this video out. Um, maybe the enemy doesn't want this thing out, but it's going to go out. Um, the, the, the video today is basically broken up into three segments. I'm going to talk kind of fast here because there's a lot to get out. Uh, three segments. The first segment is a word from the Lord. Uh, the second one is a dream segment. And then the third segment is a dream recall segment. So I'd bear with me as I share a lot with you here today. Uh, time is short, folks. Uh, the Lord is coming soon. Uh, so was the rapture and so was the tribulation period. Uh, that seven-year period where the Lord describes it as the worst time the world has ever seen or ever will see again. It's at our doorstep. Uh, the first thing he told me at the beginning of this year, early this year, late last year, um, things that he told me before any of this COVID stuff had hit. Um, number one is division is coming to the land. Well, that's easy to say now that we see a lot of division out there. I, I get that. When he told me none of this stuff had, had gone on, I told my church, I told my wife, I told some people that I knew, <clears throat> division's coming. And I, I warned the church locally where I was at, beware of division. I told them repeatedly, beware of division, it's coming. Um, but this is on a much larger scale that the Lord was talking about. And it's here. And even what we're seeing now, it's going to get a lot worse than what we're seeing now. Uh, that's the impression that the Lord had given me. Uh, scri scripture does teach us, doesn't it, about division right before he comes back. Right? There's, there's the wheat and the tares parable. There's father against mother, uh, father against son, son, you know, daughter against mother. Those those passages there um, that the Lord talks about before he comes back in the end days. And do you guys remember that dream I had? It was last year, I believe, um, and it still is on my channel, where I talked about America being at a choose you this moment who you will serve moment time that's, that's where america was at and i put that out there and the lord had said i had actually said in the video the lord is drawing a line in the sand and the lord corrected me and said i have drawn the line in the sand say that i have drawn the line in the sand we need to choose which side you're going to be on and the lord um, that that salvation message is out there for anyone who, who would grab onto it and believe it then you best do it soon because time is running out. Um, <clears throat> we're at a crossroads in America. Yes, we are. As people think that we're not. Yes, we are. People think this COVID thing is going to go away. Things will go back to normal in a few months. We'll be fine. It's not going away, folks. It's not going anywhere. In fact, the title of the video is Something Big is Coming. And that leads me to the next word that I got from the Lord. Something big this way comes is what he told me. Something big is coming and told me repeatedly many times in the sleep and while I was awake something big is coming and I'm going to get into more of that in, in just a little bit the other thing he told me this word from the Lord is the times they are a changing the times they are just like the songs the times they are a changing the times they are a changing um, and what he told me about that was this isn't a, a temporary change it's a permanent one we are heading right for uh, the seven year tribulation period where a mark or the name, or the number of the beast. Read the passage carefully. There's three different things there uh, that people will have to have. It will be mandatory if you want to buy or sell anything. I'm not saying the vaccine coming is that, but what the trend is and what we're seeing is something's coming where you will have to have something on your right hand or your forehead or you're not buying or selling anything. You won't be part of the system. And if you won't be part of the system, you won't be a part of the the nation. Yeah, you're just you're, You won't be included in that. If you take that, Mark, you know, we know what Scripture says about that. You're done. You're pledging your allegiance to the Antichrist and globalist world system. Don't do it. Get saved now. And in, in my opinion, what I believe is you won't have to worry about it. Uh, believing in a preacher of rapture, of course. All right. The next thing he told me was, and this one's interesting, uh, this is going to be the greatest year ever. And that was, I could feel his presence when he told me that earlier in the year but then COVID-19 hit I thought greatest year ever but then you know we started thinking about well what would constitute a greatest year ever we were thinking about you know from our perspective what would be the greatest year ever financial freedom all debts paid off great health dream job you know the, I mean what would constitute a, the greatest year ever you know we, we tend to think earthly and worldly but this is you know from God's perspective what he's talking about the greatest year ever what does that mean a great awakening? 
all this stuff going on now, we see a lot of people waking up to the corruption that's not only in our government, but governments around the globe. A lot of wickedness and the sex trafficking thing being broken open, and that's being exposed. Uh, there's, there's just so much corruption, folks, and people are waking up to that. Uh, many people are, are uh, uh, you know, Christians that are you know, waking up to their spiritual state and, and repenting and, and coming back to Christ and rededicating their lives to Christ. I think a lot of people have, have been saved since this thing had started, and I think many more are going to get saved. That would constitute a greatest year ever for sure. But my other thought was this. Does, is, could the greatest year ever mean the rapture happens this year? Could. I hope so. But I don't know. Boy, wouldn't that be great. That would constitute a greatest year ever. And, and again, I'm not prophesying that. The Lord never told me that, that the rapture is going to happen this year. Um, but, but I believe it is quite possible. Um, he also told me that we're entering into a season of change. And, and obviously we're already there. We're there now. But nowhere's near where we're heading. If we, you think we've changed now. That's nothing compared to what's the change that's coming. And not temporary change, folks. Permanent change. Uh, to take words right out of, you know, from David, uh, uh, Dana Coverstone's video, brace yourself and get ready, folks, because it's coming. All right, I'm going to get right into the dream segment now, um, and there's a lot to share, so I'll just get into it. I had a dream. The first one was a massive object that approached our planet, um, and as big as the sun and the moon could appear uh, in our sky, this appeared so much bigger than that. Uh, dark. It was dark surrounding it. Uh, but then, but there was like an ominous kind of orange glow around it, and it, it approached our planet. And I, I no sooner saw that image, and that disappeared, and then I saw another image. It was like a Star Wars, like Death Star type of image that appeared, and then that disappeared. But then these words that I heard, the star that will bring death. And that was it. And that's where it ended. Next dream. Uh, dream of the state of the church. This one was disturbing. Uh, I had a dream that I walked into a church. There were many people there, but everyone seemed to be looking down at their phones. There was also strangers walking around in the church with seemingly a strong influence on the folks in the church. Everyone was preoccupied, looking down on their phones in the church. Um, then the Lord showed me a wall within the church, and there were many screens on the church, like TV screens, many TV screens, a bunch of them. I don't even know the number. Um, and then he had revealed to me what was on those screens and what people were actually looking at. They, all the screens represented what the folks were looking at, and it was pornography. Um, and just to be clear, I didn't see any pornographic images. The Lord just revealed to me this is what is being watched, and it's within the church. So I began to yell and tell people and warn them of the dangers of this. They ignored me. Nobody listened. So then I went out to get the pastor who was not in the church at the time, interestingly enough, and I told him what was going on in his church. So we started walking back to the sanctuary. And as we were heading back, he stopped me. And he revealed to me that he's not actually a man. He's a woman. Um, he had no, and just a, a, an, an evil smile on his face telling me he had, there's no, and he had no intentions of stopping uh, the sexual sin that was going on in his church. Not going to preach against it. Not going to talk about it. We're going to let this go. Do you guys recall how Peter, or I mean, sorry, Paul dealt with sexual sin in 1 Corinthians? It was pretty harsh, uh, but it, needs, it needed to be dealt with, didn't it? You guys recall the sins of Sodom and Gomorrah? I say sins. Uh, it wasn't the sin of homosexuality, folks, that destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. There were, and obviously there were many other sins, that, too, that would need to be talked about. But it was the condoning of it. It was, the, it was it's the, not just those things, folks. At the forefront, if you read that story carefully, the condoning of that sexual sin ultimately destroyed the place. See, somebody can struggle with sexual sin, folks. A lot of people do. But confess those things. If, if it's a weakness, you pray the Lord's grace and mercy is there. And he's not looking to, to condemn or to punish, you know. If, if it's a weakness, confess that before the Lord and he will certainly help you with that. All right, next one's a rapture dream. i got to get going. There's a lot to share here. Uh, I call it a rapture dream, even though I wasn't caught up in this dream. But here's how it went. I was having a conversation with somebody. Don't know who it was and don't know what we were talking about. But in the middle of that conversation, we were stopped with loud words that were spoken. It was so clear. And this is what it said. And we're having this conversation. Then I heard these words. As of the voice of a great trumpet... Conversation stopped. We both stopped talking, and then I just I just smiled. 
uh, because I knew I was about to get raptured. It was, it was an amazing dream, an amazing feeling, hard for me to describe that. But then the, the dream isn't over yet. And then I heard a verse of a song that I haven't heard in a long time, the hymn, It Is Well. Um, and then not just any verse, but verse 3, and not even at the beginning of verse 3. I heard these words, so I heard, As of the voice of a great trumpet, I stopped talking, then I heard these words, And the clouds be rolled back as a scroll, the trump shall resound, and the Lord shall descend. And then I said in the dream, Even so, it is well with my soul. Just a, a phenomenal dream that was. It, I can't even explain to you the feeling I had. Next dream, it's a wolf's dream. It's, it's similar to, to Coverstone's dream, being a Coverstone's dream, but it, it is different. And I had this at the beginning of the year. Um, there were, where I live is out in the country. There's an empty field off to the side of us, cornfield. There was nothing in it in this dream. There was two wolves just lurking about there. They were kind of sitting and just waiting and just watching, like getting ready to pounce. Me and then, and, you know, where, where I live. Um, Coverstone's dream was different where he saw wolves, many wolves in a field, but there was a dark figure striking them, provoking them to anger, and then pointing them and directing them to go into the church to attack the people who are standing on the Word of God, um, and people that were preaching against sin and whatever else. So it's different, but it was similar. Folks, I just ask you to pray. Uh, if you're standing on the Word of God, pray for protection for the church. Anyway. Next one is chaos and fighting. This one was with massive fights breaking out in cities and elsewhere, and of course we're seeing that today. But what I saw was so much worse than what we're seeing on TV today. So much worse. People, there, there was like there was no laws at all restricting the fighting. People were free to go out and just hack each other to pieces, and that's what was going on. Swords and machetes, and people were just, it was disturbing. Uh, it was just very disturbing. There was one guy I saw, there was an image in there uh, in the dream of a man standing there, with a machete in one hand, and his other arm, he was from his elbow down, was missing. Now he was trying to balance himself because from the knee down on one of his legs was missing, and he had gashes all over his body. It was very disturbing, uh, but that's that's what I saw, and what I think the Lord is. What we're seeing now, there's nothing compared to what's coming. Pray, folks. Pray. Uh, we were given these dreams oftentimes to pray about these things. Now, that the Lord would step in. What would cause that, by the way? What would cause fighting at that level? Lawlessness. And they could defund the police, huh? Oh, there's a great idea. Let's defund the police. You know, you, you know who you defund? The crooked police. You find the ones that are doing what they're doing, and you defund them. Lawlessness is coming, though, and the Antichrist is said to be a lawless one. I tend to think that what I saw there was a, you know, a, an image of a, a time in the tribulation period, but it might be before. Now, what else can cause people going into complete chaos and fighting like that? I don't know, maybe a, a big event, a big major event, some type of a kickoff event, worse than COVID-19. Uh, I don't know, nuclear strike on our soil? Do you remember that dream I had about New York City? I shared it, I, I think that was two years ago. Uh, something like that could happen, by the way. Something, a big event like that. I'm going to share more about that one in just a, bit, in a minute here. What about a meteor strike? Uh, there's a lot of chatter about, you know, we're entering, we've entered into some, you know, meteor field or something like that, and we're seeing definitely an uptick in, you know, meteors flying across close to us. And uh, it has been reported by a few sources, though, that, that, that there is something coming, and it's coming soon. Uh, Israeli News Live, Stephen Ben Noon had reported, uh, and, and his sources, by the way, are an advisor to the president, a FEMA engineer, and I believe it was an FBI agent. Check his channel out. It, this is coming from him. That something was coming in September. We'll see. We'll find out. Uh, Steve Hodges from the Common Sense Show reported something similar. Um, and where was the other one? Marfugal News. Just check these things out and pray about it. Do your own homework. Oh, they would tell us if something was coming. No, they, they're not going to tell you. You really think they're going to tell you months beforehand? Yeah, they're stockpiling food now. The government, they're stockpiling. They've been doing it for a long time. Ammo and food. They know something's coming. Of course something's coming. They're going to tell you. They're going to tell you about a day or two before. That's about it. And watch you and watch everybody fight and trip over each other while the, the, the shelves of the stores empty out. While they think they're sitting safe and sound somewhere. But God knows where they're at. All right. Um, and just as a quick reminder, we the things that we're starting to see come to pass sound very similar to the beginning of the tribulation period. In Revelation chapter 6, uh, chapter 6 through 19. But in chapter 6, here's a quick summary. The Antichrist is revealed. He's unrestrained at this point. 
Peace is taken from the earth. They kill each other. Massive famine and hyperinflation. Death and hell prevail against uh, prevail at this point. A quarter of the earth's population is going to die. They kill each other with swords and hunger, and the beasts of the field go on full attack mode. And in verse 13, there appears to be a meteor shower, a pretty serious one. And this is all at the very beginning, folks. Uh, and, but again, a meteor shower or something like that would, you know, take place during the tribulation period. Um, but that doesn't mean we won't see a few hits prior to that. So anyway, moving on. Moving on to the dream recall section now. I want to bring back a few that the Lord had given me years ago. And he's brought them back to memory, I think, for a reason. The first one's the S10 dream. Hear me out on this one. I call this the S10 dream, and you'll see why in a second. Uh, the Lord and I were driving to a certain destination point, uh, to a Jurassic Park-like high-tech gate. He was driving, by the way. And we were driving in a Chevy S10 pickup truck. My first thought when this dream was over was, okay, Lord, really? Uh, we're going to drive off into eternity in a Chevy S10 pickup truck? I can think of better things. I can think of, you know, a 69 Camaro would be cool. Uh, but I was like, Chevy S10, that's fascinating. That means something. I'm going to get to that here in a second. There was some disturbance around us on the way here, but nothing major. I felt, you know, I was protected there. We arrived at the gate, a very, again, a very high-tech light gate. And behind the gate was all manner of demons and devils and wickedness, but they couldn't get out. They were restrained. The Lord then pulled out his card, key, whatever it was, to unlock the security gate. He swiped the security lock, and the doors began to open as we drove off. And they were now unrestrained. And there was a massive earthquake that had start, started taking place as we were driving off. We watched these, all these things come out uh, from the rearview mirror. And we drove off into safety. In fact, we were, I felt so safe. We were actually laughing as we drove off. Um, I, I believe this is a pre-trib rapture dream. I believe that's what it is. The Lord drives up to the gate with restrained wickedness behind it. Remember the restrainer in 2 Thessalonians 2. And I talk a lot about that in my second video, by the way, on the pre-trib rapture. It's primarily on 2 Thessalonians 2. And uh, Jesus holds the key to unrestrain. Read Revelation chapter 5. That's in there. He's the one who's unrestraining there. He's got the key. And we drive up to the gate holding back the wickedness because the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. Uh, Jesus is the head of the body here in the dream. I, I represent the body. We drive we drive off together uh, out ahead of it. And then we watch again what's going on behind us from the rear view mirror. Rapture first. Uh, and then they're let loose. Um, the next one. Now listen to the other recall dream. This is a really short dream. But man, I'll, I'll never forget how loud and clear these words were just in a dead sleep heard these words. The statement was simple. The Lord said, pray for protection for 10 days. You remember I put that out there and I asked you folks to pray about it who were watching it. That was a couple of years ago, I think. I tried to think, you know, and maybe apply that to my everyday life then and it, nothing ever fit. It, it just wasn't the time for it. He's bringing it back to, to memory now to, to, to consider this. I had no idea why he told me that, but here, here's my thoughts on these two recall dreams that I just told you. The S10 pickup means something significant is going to happen on September 10th. Maybe. That's the only thing I can think of. I could be wrong on that. That's the only thing I can think of. Um, the 10 days of protection would begin at that point. And you pray for something significant happens on September 10th. You pray for protection for 10 days. At the end of the 10 days, the pickup could, could represent a rapture. S10 and then pickup. You pray for protection for 10 days. If Something happens there on, on September 10th. We lead in 10 days of protection. It leads us right up into the Feast of Trumpets, which is where I believe the rapture does take place, on the Feast of Trumpets. Do I know that? Absolutely not. That's just a belief is all that is. Because um, we start talking about uh, the, the seven feasts. And folks, do a study on those. There's a story being told in those seven feasts. Do a study on them. And this is not a deep study on that. So... You know, the, the first four were fulfilled. There's actually good arguments made for the for a rapture to happen at the Pentecost. The uh, the fourth feast there um, takes place in the summer, uh, but not good enough. It, it doesn't convince me of that. I think the, the greater argument is for the Lord to come on a, on a feast of trumpets. Um, so anyway, well, it, you know, maybe the argument is, well, nobody knows the day and the hour. You're setting dates. No, I'm not setting dates. Even if it was a Feast of Trumpets, the Lord never told us the year. We don't know when that's going to happen. Uh, but I, I think there's something else going on here, though, with that no man knows the day and the hour thing. This is, I'm going to read this real quick. It's short. 
This is from Jewish Roots of Jesus. I pulled this article off the internet here. No, man no, no one knows the day or the hour. Really? This is interesting. It's just something to think about. This is one of the most oft-quoted verses um, in the scriptures that Jesus spoke about. He meant what he said and said what he meant. The question is, what did he mean? Uh, the first, there, there's a first century Jewish idiom, folks. It's a Jewish idiom that will shed much light on what Jesus was saying to his followers 2,000 years ago and to us today. All Jewish holidays uh, always fall on, on the full moon of the month, except one, Rosh Hashanah, head of the year, uh, is the only holiday that occurs on the first of the month during the month of Tishrei. The new month could not officially begin until two witnesses reported to the high priest that they had seen the sliver of the new moon. Once the first two sightings were confirmed, the priest would sound the shofar to declare the start of Rosh Hashanah. But until these two witnesses came forth, the response from the priest would always be, get this, no one knows the day or the hour. But it was always associated with this particular feast. Um, so no one knows the day and the hour. So that's, you know, the words of when Jesus says this in Matthew 24, it becomes significant. You think Jesus just randomly said that? He, you know, was Jesus pointing us away from something? Oh, don't ever try to figure out exactly, you know, or was he pointing us to something? Remember the context of Matthew 24 and who the main subject of the, of, the, of the subject of the context in Matthew 24 is? It's the Jews, folks. The first video on the preacher of rapture that I do, I spent nearly an hour establishing and proving that fact. This is in Matthew 24. So he's talking and, and pointing to a Jewish holiday here. No man knows the day and the hour. There's a lot more that could be said about that. I'm going to leave it there. And that's and hardly, and I would admit, proof that that's when the rapture is going to take place. I, I get it. Yeah, that, that's, I'm not saying for sure that's when it's going to happen. It's when I believe it's going to happen. But I could be wrong. I could be totally wrong on that. Um, again, so, again, folks, please, I'm, I'm not prophesying. I'm not saying that's what it is. I'm, boy, my, I am hoping that it is, though. But we will certainly find out. All right. All right, on to the next thing here. So, again, I have I have two videos out there, folks, on the preacher of rapture. I know I'm not the most gifted speaker in the world, and maybe I put you to sleep. Watch the videos and, and draw your own conclusions. The, the, the rapture of the church and the timing of that should not be a divisive issue. You know, but again, people just tear each other to pieces over the thing. And I, I'm just at a loss of words about how Christians talk to each other and treat each other about this issue, folks. We should be coming together now. We see what's going on around our country. They're falling apart at the seams. Come together, folks. Come together in prayer. Pray for the souls of our lost loved ones and friends and, and for this country to turn around. If it can, I, I just pray. All right, anyway, you remember earlier I told you something big this way comes, and it's really the, the name of the video I put on here because it's the thing that stands out to me, the thing that I think something big is coming much bigger. It's not COVID. It's not COVID-19. Something big is coming, and I think it's next month. I believe something big is going to happen in September. Huge. Life-altering huge. It's going to... The whole world is going to know something bad is going on, and it's it's going to shake us all to our core. We'll find out. We'll see. That's what I believe. You know, The Lord didn't say for sure to me that's what's going to happen. But I'm taking the two recall dreams, and I'm, I'm putting two and two together. i prayed about whether or not these things are so. But I think in September something big is coming. Well, I want to give you a little bit more detail on that dream that I had about New York City. It was my family and I traveling to New York City, heading to watch a Yankees game. Now, before we got into the city, though, we stopped at a store to get some stuff. We got, And as we were getting out of the vehicle, we saw people running out of the store, panicked because they were panic buying. Or looting. Everyone's, everyone had their arms full with whatever they can grab, running out of the store. Some people were standing in the parking lot just holding their, their head, just looking towards the city skyline, just in shock. I turned around and looked at the city skyline to see nothing but a massive mushroom cloud coming up, almost in slow motion. Um, shock and awe is the only thing I can think of when to describe the dream, just shock and awe. Just unbelievable what I had saw. We got into our vehicle, we drove off. Again, watch what we saw going on in, in the rearview mirror. That's how that, that's how that dream went. Um, another one was, and I'll listen to this one because two of, of these three, I believe, have already taken place. But I saw three planes crashing, heading towards the White House. 
trying to get to the White House. One was a small crop duster type plane in the stream, heading to the White House to, to bomb it and damage it, whatever. It failed in its mission, it crashed. The second plane was a bigger plane, a mid, kind of a mid-sized plane. It was heading for the same spot and do the same thing. It failed and crashed as well. But the third plane didn't fail. And it was one of those huge jumbo jets, like a 777 huge jumbo jet. It succeeded and it crashed either on or near the White House. Massive explosion that wasn't a plane crashing explosion, but more of a huge like mushroom cloud type of maybe a Beirut size just huge and, and devastated the thing. What was interesting was, because right after I had the dream, a small, this is a couple years ago, uh, a, a small crop duster type plane crash near the White House. I tried to find it on the internet again, I couldn't find it. And shortly after that, there was another plane crash of a bigger plane that was near the White House that crashed. And I was like, oh, I'm thinking, okay, well, the only one left is the third one. And obviously that hasn't happened. No, I'm bringing these two things up now. The Lord's brought them back to memory. Is that something that's going to happen next month? I don't know. We'll find out. Are, are either of these two kickoff events? Again, don't know. And the things I'm presenting to you folks today is pray about these things. We can see what's going on with the country. It's not good. It isn't good at all. Um, we're falling apart at the seams, but again, I. I guess there's no other way to word it as you ain't seen nothing yet. Uh, get ready for what's coming. Um, and I think something starting in next month is, is going to happen that's going to devastate us. I think people tend to think, well, the COVID, COVID will go away soon, things will go back to normal, and we'll go back to our normal lives. Nope, it's not going to happen. It ain't happening, folks. We see global, a globalist and ecumenical type of thing going on, you know, where we're all got to come together. And we're all going to have to, there's a vaccine, and oh, we're all, you got to have to take it, you know, at some point, and that something's going to be mandatory, and it sounds familiar, doesn't it? No man can buy or sell unless he has a mark in his right hand or in his forehead. Cashless society, all that stuff prophesied in scripture is, is almost here. I'm going to put this up now. If you're not saved, you need to get saved. I'm going to tell you any more directly than that. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, you need to do so, and you need to do so now. I'm going to share some scripture with you and say a prayer and accept Christ as your Savior. No sin is unforgivable except for the rejection of Jesus Christ as your Savior. You can't forgive that. Plan of salvation, John 3, 16, For God so loved the world, that's his motive, he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Right? Yeah, he's the sacrifice. What about Romans 3, 23? For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We've all fallen short, folks. None of our, our works, our righteousness are going to earn us our spot in heaven. It's not going to happen. Uh, the wages of sin is death, according to Romans 6.23. The penalty for it is ter eternal separation from God. You really think you're a good person all you want to. You help the community, you, you do things, you, you feed the poor, you do all this stuff, and somehow you're going to earn God's favor. All of our righteousness are as filthy rags, folks, all of it. The very best we can do is compared to a filthy rag. No righteousness we can do can get us there. Only Christ's righteousness. So what do, what do I need to do? I'm going to tell you. And, and of course in Ephesians 2, 8, 9 where it talks about not by works. We're, we, we're not saved. We're saved by faith and grace alone in Jesus Christ. So here's Romans 10, 9 and 10. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Wow, it is that simple? It's a broken, repentant, contrite heart. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, but and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth in him shall not be ashamed. Say a prayer with me right now, if you want to get saved. But it's not the prayer that's saving you, it's that belief in your heart. Amen. Father, in Jesus' name, I know I have sinned. I have broken your laws and I've broken your commandments. Please forgive me. I believe in your Son, and in the death, burial, and resurrection of your Son Jesus Christ to die and pay for it all. And I accept Jesus Christ into my heart as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. If you've said that prayer, folks, and you believe it in your heart, you are saved. Don't waste any time either. Don't waste any time. If, if you're not sure about this, you seek God out. He'll reveal that truth to you. But I'm telling you, folks, we are running out of time. We're running out of time. You don't have to believe it if you don't want to. Jesus is coming back soon. The rapture's coming. And so is the great tribulation. And you don't want to be here for that. Uh, just a quick word with anybody. Um, 
that's going to draw you away from the scriptures. I've heard some big name prophets out there, big name prophets that are trying to draw you people away from scripture, trying to get you to read other things that would, you know, uh, be just as good as scripture and whatnot. Even even some potential new discoveries coming, maybe writings of Jesus Christ that they're going to put out there. Don't believe it, folks. We have that complete written word of God right there. That's God's. That's our. That should be our final authority right there. So don't believe anyone who's going to draw you away from his word. Amen. Anyone else who's got an issue? You, know, you hear all the, this is a word for the, you, those anti-doom and gloomers out there. I, I suppose I would be that. I guess I'm, an, I'm, a, I'm a gloom and doomer. Because I'm telling you, judgment's coming. There's, there's more talk about judgment in scripture than there is anything else. Jesus talked more about hell than he did heaven. You know, but the love of God is there. The grace of God is there. And salvation is being offered to anyone who wants it. But judgment is coming, folks. Don't let anyone tell you any different. Uh, I guess Jesus is a gloom and doomer, too. You read the scriptures. You see how much he talks about it. John's a gloom and doomer. Read Revelation. You know, Did Jesus sound all prosperity gospel in Matthew 24? Doesn't sound like it to me. Uh, but again, that grace and love of Jesus Christ is offered to all. So that's all I have, folks. Uh, share this video with whoever you want to. I'm not looking for a debate with anybody. I just would. I want to see people get saved because we're running out of time. Until then, keep looking up. Barry Jepson draws nigh.